Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ultimate Channel CK. I am Dr. Lewis Muchile, and I want to take you through uh, the weird causes or the weird uh, uh, things that might lead you to iodine deficiency. Now, I want you to understand, iodine is a, a, a micronutrient that is needed in the body in very small quantities, but we again do not uh, reach to these levels or these quantities because uh, we neglect a lot of this information and then we end up with this hyperthyroidism or go it away the thyroid gland is uh, 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 swelling and you go for surgeries. Okay, so today I'm going to tackle different foods and different elements that might lead you to deficiency in iodine. Okay, and first of all, I wouldn't go into the deficiency of iodine without even mentioning the benefits of iodine in your system. Now remember every cell in your body Every single cell of your body requires a certain amount of iodine. We only know of the thyroid gland only. But all cells in your body require iodine. And I also want you to understand there is a relationship between estrogen and iodine. When iodine is high, estrogen levels go down. So it helps us control estrogen. So that could be, actually that is our number one benefit of iodine. That it controls or balances uh, uh, the levels of estrogen. And as a result, uh, iodine can be used to clear uh, uh, you know, called, uh, this called cystic acne, the acne that is caused by uh, overgeneration of estrogen. So for ladies who have acne, you might consider uh, the use and the increase in iodine in your diet. Number two, we have scar healing. For those uh, women who have gone for CS section or cesarean sections and those people who are, <coughs> have scars, as a result of uh, healing or of wounds. Now you consider you can consider using iodine, possibly try out just applying iodine for a whole month. You will see the difference. Now some of you tell me that iodine stains the skin. We have clear iodine that doesn't stain the skin. So you can use it for uh, your scar healing. And then iodine also plays a major role in reduction of inflammation in joints. That is arthritis, osteoarthritis, and those people who have, who, whose fingers uh, keep clubbing, you can use iodine to reverse that. Then again, healing of warts. And those people who have uh, uh, skin plugs and, and warts, iodine, application of iodine can, use, uh, can, can be helpful. You can either apply or use it in your diet. So increase your dietary uh, supplements of iodine. And number, uh, another benefit of iodine is it shrinks cysts. So uh, women who have, uh, studies have shown that women who have higher content of iodine in their bodies, they don't... Uh, uh, have uh, ovarian cysts, uh, cervical cysts, even uh, picos and, uh, and breast cysts because even thyroid cysts because it suppresses this cysts, it shrinks them to a level that the immune system can handle them. So iodine is also considered as an anti-cancer because of the ability to shrink uh, cysts. So all those are benefits of iodine in our bodies. Okay. So before we get into details of this, we should have understood uh, and now we understand uh, the benefits of iodine in our body. So we need iodine. Now, most of you know about these two, the soils and the diets. People understand that these two can deplete your iodine levels in the body. Why am I talking about soils? I'm talking about fertilizers that utilize uh, NPK. This is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These fertilizers, uh, once you use them for your agriculture, they deplete iodine levels in your body because once you consume these foods that are coming from agriculture that uses NPK, you start to suppress your iodine levels. And that means you get this exposure to cancer and those benefits that I just mentioned, you get the opposite. Number two is diet. Where do we source iodine? Iodine is sourced from seafood, specifically oysters, sardines, omena, uh, uh, crabs, all these fish, all these seafoods are the ones that are high in content of iodine vegetables also have high content of iodine so you should consider eating seafoods uh, alternative days and also vegetables in high quantity but remember vegetables also have a problem uh, if eaten a salad they suppress your iodine levels but if you steam them or ferment them then uh, your iodine levels go high now so number one factor that depletes our iodine is lack or deficiency of selenium selenium is is, is a metal that in our body helps us convert T4, which is thyroid uh, 
wanted to do four iodines to T3. So T4 is an, uh, uh, a thyroid hormone that is inactive. Its active form is T3. So this conversion of T4 to T3 requires selenium. And where do you source selenium? Nuts. You can eat ground nuts. You can eat uh, peanuts. But peanuts have a problem to mention it uh, as we go along. But your ground nuts have high content of selenium. So you can eat them. The problem with nuts is once you start eating one, you might eat a whole load of them. So be careful with the consumption of nuts. Number two, radiation. I always mention that these people go for uh, cancer therapy, uh, radiation therapy, and uh, expose themselves to uh, different radiations like X-ray or gamma rays. Iodine can be converted to its uh, radioactive form, that is iodine-131. So iodine-131 is the radioactive form. Now this iodine-131, once you get the exposure to it, it gorges or lodges into your thyroid gland. And that can cause you thyroid cancer. So to avoid this, once you get exposure to uh, iodine, uh, radiative, radioactive iodine, what do you do? You consume potassium iodide because this potassium iodide, and this is a synthetic product, uh, it comes as a packaged uh, synthetic product. So once you consume this potassium iodide, it clears iodine-131 in your system and you become uh, free from uh, the exposure. Number three, we have foods. So certain foods deplete your iodine levels in the blood or in the system. Number one is cassava. Cassava has different effects. One, it directly binds to uh, iodine and inhibits its absorption in the thyroid. And number two, it has these two components, thiocyanate and linamarin. Those are two uh, components that are present in cassava that bind to iodine and deplete iodine in your body. So be careful with the, the consumption of cassava. You can eat cassava, but don't overeat cassava because too much cassava will, one, bind to iodine and deplete it, and two, it has two components that binds to iodine and depletes it. Then we have soy products. Soy products, canola, corn oils, and seed oils. Now remember, you might avoid seed oils, canola, uh, corn, and all those seed oils and, uh, and products that come from seeds. But nowadays, canola and soy products come in, uh, uh, in form of milk, and some of them are even uh, fed to livestock. And this livestock, once they get the milk from it, you take the milk. So basically you are consuming canola indirectly or uh, soy products indirectly or corn uh, products indirectly. So be careful with again the complex that you mentioned that is agriculture and the food industry. Number three, uh, peanuts. So peanuts have uh, a component that again deplete iodine. So we mentioned uh, uh, in foods, we mentioned about uh, the nuts which give you selenium. But peanuts, uh, too, too much consumption of peanuts can deplete your iodine again, okay? And the last one is millet and rice. Again, these have components that also bind the iodine and uh, inhibit the conversion of T3, T4 to T3, which is the active form of iodine. So those are the foods that can deplete your iodine levels and cause you goiter or uh, cancers, okay? Now, uh, so that was number three, foods. Number four, we have vegetables. Now, vegetables have a mild effect on the thyroid and, uh, and iodine absorption. If you eat salads, these are the ones that com completely or uh, have a high chance to deplete your, your iodine. But if you steam these vegetables or you make ferment, you ferment them, like the fermented cabbage, then again you reduce uh, the chances of iodine deficiency because these ones, the fermented one and the steamed one, uh, have a high content of, of iodine. Then number five is bromine and fluorine or fluoride. Now remember, when we're making bread, we form the dough. That dough utilizes potassium bromide. Now, potassium bromide is a chemical that will inhibit your absorption of uh, uh, iodine and it will also block the formation of T3. Remember I said the, in, in, in our first, one of the first videos that effects of bread. So bread has potassium iodide, or bromide, sorry, and bromine is a component that inhibits iodine. So this will bring you problems, so avoid bread. And, 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 and wheat products. Again, uh, fluoride. Fluoride is a component that if you say you've never been exposed to fluoride, then uh, you need to think twice. Most of us are using toothpastes. And most of us are drinking water that is high in fluoride content. Most of us go for teeth whitening. All this expose you to fluoride contents. And that's why we're telling people, uh, and there's a, move that, a movement that is going on, that people should avoid the use of uh, toothpaste, these uh, fluoridated toothpastes. And also, 
whitening of teeth. You do not need to whiten your teeth. You can you will weaken the enamel. So kindly avoid fluoridated toothpastes. We have brands of toothpaste that are not fluoridated and avoid whitening of teeth. Number six, you have oral oral contraceptives. How many of our women are on oral contraceptives, both monthly or, or re, uh, they take them daily? How many of our women are on oral contraceptives? Remember, these oral contraceptives are high in estrogen. Some of them have estrogen and progesterone. So this estrogen inhibits, uh, uh, remember when estrogen goes high, high in your blood, it's just, uh, it inhibits thyroid. Okay, so we need thyroid to go high, we need iodine to go high so that estrogen is balanced. Okay, so if you can consume oral contraceptives that have estrogen, then again you are suppressing your levels of thyroid. And that's why these people, uh, most of them have goiter later in life. And then smoking, the last point. Now smoking has to work in conjunction with all this. And if you realize, smoking has all effects, both on blood pressure, both on diabetes, both on uh, cancer, and all these conditions. And thyroid or thyrotoxicosis or goiter or uh, a reduced amount of uh, thyroid uh, hormones is not an exception in smoking. So smoking, you should just avoid smoking totally and alcohol, avoid them totally. So basically, those are the factors or those are the components that might deplete your iodine and that might cause you problems in future. So again, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.